But Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> it was never my intention to speak on this resolution because generally I tend to believe, Mr. Speaker, that when a resolution is tabled in this August chamber, a resolution that brings relief to the people of this country, and in this instance, 8,000 people, there would be very little room for debate. But you see, Mr. Speaker, when you hear utterances that carry not an iota of truth, clearly intended to sensationalize and deceive the compunction assails me and the need to respond becomes an obligation. Mr. Speaker, I, ju I juxtapose what the leader of the opposition and member for Miku North, Miku South, sorry, said in his contribution today, alongside the untruths that he spews on social media under his name, and you wonder whether the member for Miku South remembers anything or suffers from selective amnesia. The audacity of this individual, Mr. Speaker, had him posting on social media a huge, a fat, a humongous, a grandiose, a too heavy to carry lie. Just like Mr. Speaker, he keeps on lying and deceiving the people wanting them to believe that this government sold a pot. He actually posted, repeated, and said on a multiplicity of occasions that we as a government sold the pot. Clearly, Mr. Speaker, this was a deceitful statement intended to cause sensationalism. It is more than dishonesty, that's put it mildly. It basically speaks to someone, Mr. Speaker, who lacks the ability to retain even his own name. So sometimes when he speaks, he qualifies it by saying, the truth is what you believe it to be. So anything he says and he believes it, it is the truth. So in his head and his head alone, we, the accusation of we selling the pots is true only to, to him. In, in chance, in Mr. Speaker, another, another utterance that he made, and he's doing all of this, Mr. Speaker, in an attempt to assist him in keeping afloat his sinking leadership boat. But there are two sailors on that boat called Andy and Ozzy. Mm. And those sailors will ensure that that boat sinks. The Christians. So that leadership boat is down to submerge. Mr. Speaker, you will not believe that again on social media, another lie, the first one is we sold the ports. I suspect you were born on All Liars Day. They have All Fools Day. I don't know why we... I think I'll ask... Member for Castro, you said sorry, sorry, I, I, I have I, given you great liberty, but consistently referring to a member of the House as a liar is unparliamentary. I think you can use another word to say exactly what you want to say. The, the untruth teller. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, what? You know, Mr. Speaker, that's one of the arguments I always get myself involved in. Eh? If a member has been factual and can substantiate whatever he asserts, 
And it is, Andrew Paul and I had that discussion, I remember one time. He said, even if he knows, and he was referring to the leader of the opposition, who was then Prime Minister, even if he knows and he can decipher the lies that the, he told, um, you know, in his mind, this man ought not lie, so he'll, he'll use some other words. Anyhow, I am guided, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, another untruth is that he posted today's borrowings will bring our borrowings as a government in excess of half a billion dollars. Yes, he did. He posted it under his name on social media. And what is worrisome, Mr. Speaker? They are persons who are supposedly intelligent. They take this and they run with it expecting their leader to be telling them the truth. They came down on this government for the allegation of selling the ports, which is an untruth. They are going all over the place. They even said there is no longer Madi Puetes, Madi Vole. That is how far they have gone, Mr. Speaker. In response to a false allegation that our borrowings today will bring us in excess of half a billion dollars. You know, a leader, a leader, your leadership boat is sinking and you are seeking to cause sensa sensationalism by having the few noisemakers latched on to you. The other birthday party, I counted 12, he wasn't even there. <laughs> A leader who had promised to have 15,000 people converge on the square. Mr. Speaker, I passed there in a surreptitious way. For Microsoft. Clarification. Clarification. Are you yielding? There was never any. Are you yielding, Member for Castle Central? No, I wouldn't yield, Mr. Speaker. Clarification, though. If it's a point of order, yes. This clarification is cause for further confusion. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition said he will have 15,000 people congregate on the Derrick Walcott Square. But guess what? He didn't even know. He did not even know where the demonstration was. He disembarked on the VG field, by which time the vehicle left. He had to walk from the VG field to the square. So he didn't even know. And I rather suspect he didn't know where the party for him was. But Mr. Speaker, on a very serious note, Mr. Speaker, you cannot, as a leader, as an ex-prime minister, be feeding your people, your followers, with so many untruths, not one or two, many. We sold the ports. Mr. Speaker, this government to fund the 2022-2023 budget is yet to borrow one penny. That, let me repeat, to finance this year's budget, that run from the 1st of April 2022 to March 31st, 2023, we have borrowed not one penny. Not, I did not say that within the confines of the budget, an intention to borrow was not expressed. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I am saying today, since the passage of the budget, we are yet to borrow one penny. But well, eventually we will have to, because the budget has to be financed. But for this individual, Mr. Speaker, to tell his people that this will take us to over half a billion dollars is a blatant untruth. <laughs> you see, Mr. Speaker, this leader of the opposition, ex-Prime Minister, member for Miku South, has the record 
for boring. And we can check the records, it will prove it. He has the record of borrowing. The most money borrowed by any government in one term was under the lid of them. And that can be substantiated, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know, I sit and I listen to the leader of the opposition. And sometimes I'm wondering, why am I in politics? You know why? If I were to be in politics and deceive as much as the leader of the opposition and tell so many untruths and be such a hypocrite, I don't want to be in politics. Mr. Speaker, whilst the leader of the opposition sat right here in that seat, another post of his that today we are creating new jobs for the boys by making room for the appointment of a deputy speaker. Can you imagine, Mr. Speaker? In five years, you have this chamber functioning without a deputy speaker. In five years, you made a mockery of the Constitution. When you were interrogated, you said that the Constitution says, when it's convenient to me. Five years later, it wasn't convenient. We are seeking to kill a defect. We are seeking to bring normalcy because you know, the Constitution envisaged that there would have been honorable men and women who have to ensure that the stipulations within the Constitution are adhered to. That's correct, before he was born. But here came the leader of the opposition into the political periphery. And all break loose, Mr. Speaker. Totally disregarded the Constitution, and not only in that regard. He started off his center. The Constitution clearly says that there shall be a sitting of Parliament within 30 days after the general election. He disregarded that. When interviewed, you know what he said, Mr. Speaker? The Constitution imposes no sanctions. You know, taking our most supreme law for party show, Mr. Speaker, and then want to come and pose yourself as some kind of authoritarian holding moral high ground. Where? Where? So you disrespected it by, by having parliament beyond the 30 days. You further disrespected it by not appointing a deputy speaker. And guess what, Mr. Speaker? You know why he did not appoint a deputy speaker? Because he wanted to make room for the largest cabinet in the history of St. Lucia. He had the largest cabinet in the history of St. Lucia. So the deputy speaker, that position as mandated by the constitution, was sacrificed as he relied on, the, as his, on his own interpretation of as far as or when it's convenient. And here we are, here we are, attempting to ensure that when dishonorable men enter the honorable chamber, they are obligated to comply with the stipulations of the law. So we are seeking to amend this constitution to ensure that a prime minister's hands are relieved. I will get there, you know, but it is deceit in the same thing I'm talking about, Mr. Speaker. Yes. You opened the door. You opened it. Yes. You sat here and posted that. And you know the worst thing? Guess who's talking about we're looking for a job for friends, family, and foreigners? I could not believe the man is quoting FFF. I could not believe it. Yes. But you know what, Mr. Speaker, when we get there? I will, I will, um, I will ensure that I have a copy of the post and make it a document of the house. You know, Mr. Speaker, that is the kind of hypocrisy I don't like. You took advantage of a situation. There is clearly a loophole 
You took advantage of it. In fact, I will ask us to amend the constitution as well to say any time a man becomes prime minister and he fails to call to convene parliament within 30 days, he shall be liable to six months imprisonment. <laughs> so you will not say there are no sanctions. It is sadly, it is people like you who disregard our law, who disregard our constitution that cause us to be in constitutional dilemmas, headed for the court, taking years and years to resolve. And if you don't know, there is also convention. How has it been done before in the absence of my own interpretation? And that's the first time again in the history of this country that for five years we didn't have a deputy speaker. Now, Mr. Speaker, I heard another thing again. <laughs> ah, we did not... We did not what? Pay Liad workers because we were trying to fix the economy. You know? <laughs> yes, you did. Ma majestic or Liad, whichever. Which one did you see? Which one? Majestic. Okay. I stand corrected by my very good friend who seldom remembers the truth. He said, Mr. Speaker, that we did not pay the majestic workers because they were trying to fix the economy. I want to talk about it at first. Mr. Speaker, I was in a cabinet of ministers with the leader of the opposition. The leader of the opposition was then Minister of Tourism. You remember? I know you don't remember much. You remember you said under your tenure as Minister of Tourism, you would build 13 hotels? You remember that? With me? 13 hotels! But Mr. Speaker, as Minister of Tourism, you gave millions and millions away to American Airlines. You gave millions to foreign aircraft. Say I lie to foreign airlines, say I lie. And you opened your mouth and you said you will not assist the act. Mr. Speaker, the allocation to Ministry of Tourism, which was supposed to have been used to promote St. Lucia as a destination, was being used to make donations to foreign airlines, except the act. What were you giving them money for? Donations. What are they? American was coming here with empty seats. Because guess what? The Minister of Tourism had already paid for the vacant seats. That is a fact. I remember one year, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the allocation to the Ministry of Tourism was $50 million. It was increased. The rest. Mr. Speaker, I speak from a standpoint of knowledge. Fifty million dollars because persons who have the view there is a tourism guru at the helm. But it turned out to be a tourism mumu. Because boxing in paradise took so much out of our money. FCCF conference, donations to airlines, nothing to promote the better good of this country. The you know, Food and Run Festival, you know, my ex prime minister is reminding me, he was the one who made the allocation. <laughs> you know, and today, you have the audacity, the goal to come into this honorable house. Yo, <laughs> the ex-Prime Minister says he thought the member was a tourism guru. <laughs> and those are facts, Mr. Speaker. Those are facts. Oh, Heppel, how much have been paid to Heppel again? You are Minister of Tourism. It's the same way, you know. It's the same way. You are Minister of Tourism. They give you to run the tourism ministry. You bring in Heppel to help you work. It is the same way you are Minister of Finance. 
We had never in the history of this country paid anybody any money to help us do our budgets. Our loyal civil servants always came to the call. But no, Unson Young. Unson Young got Unson old now. Money they have so. You know? And you know, Mr. Speaker, when he was questioned, he said, hey, I mean, they didn't even take 1% of the budget. You move in a budget of $1.8 billion. 1% is $18 million. You have the audacity to even tell us how much it, 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 it costs you? Sir John never did that. Kenny Anthony never did that. Philip Jepier never did that. Um, I have, there was no ex-Prime Minister who ever did that. The loyal civil servants were there. But for the first three years, he had no faith in them. He sidelined them. He disregarded them. And guess what, Mr. Speaker? When things got rough and there was no more money in the government coffers, he reverted to them. He reverted to them. And today, want to come in this chamber and pretend you have all the answers. Which answers? Which answers? Which answers you have? In 2016, our economy was the best performing economy in the OECS. The best. You left it at the worst. You know? In 2016, Mr. Speaker, we were paying $32 million in rent. When he left it in 2021, our rental bill had gone up to 72 million a year. He almost doubling it, or more than doubling it. More than doubling it. I'm coming to Orange Grove. But hear that, Mr. Speaker, and it's a fact that he, he rented five offices from his father. So part of the increase went to pay the rent to his own father. No, it's not, an, it's not conflict of interest, it's not corruption, it's not unethical in his eyes. You know, and then want to come here, and then want to come here and pretend you know everything. Mr. Speaker, you know what is funny? <laughs> you know what is funny, Mr. Speaker? The leader of the opposition never entertained Liad workers. And mind you, they were both Flabo and Labour in Liad. He never entertained the Majestic workers. They were both Labour and Flabo in, 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 in Majestic. But to appease them, to play on the conscience, he said, I congratulate the government for paying them. So that out there, in their minds, Boss no happy punu. He could have done it. You know, he could have done it, Mr. Speaker, but he didn't do it. And guess his excuse? We were busy fixing the economy. How you were fixing the economy when you take $7.3 million and give to a man who does business if your brother-in-law? Hmm? That's how you were fixing the economy? And you know, I'm coming. <laughs> The man gives us back part of our $7.3 million. The leader of the opposition had the audacity to go on television and to tell the people of this country they, they are happy they got part of the money back. I saved that clip for election. I don't know if you'll be there, though. <laughs> because I don't know if Andy and, and Ozzy will do what they have to do. Remember the Castro Central? Um, yes. I'm straining to try to stop you. Okay, but I recognize that the member from Miku South inserted in his debate the ministerial statement That's that correct. he put the door ajar, and unfortunately I've just kicked it down completely. That's correct. But, but I really am trying to stop you, I just can't. Okay, very well, Mr. Speaker, very well. That's why I, said I actually sang, don't open the door, knock and the door shall be open. Okay, he brought it in, he was busy fixing the economy. $7.3 million dollars for vaccines and lied to us, told us an untruth, well, Mr. Speaker, told us an untruth by saying Barbados paid money as well. Barbados did not pay one penny 
Not one penny. So far, we have been refunded. I don't know if it's begged, Mr. The Prime Minister, beg the money for our money back. I beg the man for our money back because the Prime Minister is in desperate need of money. The man sent us 2.7, he has 4.6 left for us. On behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia, I am asking the member for Miku South to make an assiduous effort to retrieve the monies that came from our coffers and for which we have received no value. Please! That's how you are fixing the economy. Were you fixing the economy by giving Lokobi $32 million to tell us where to plant grass? That's how you fix the economy. Were you fixing the economy when Sanders collected $24 million on our behalf and you asked them to keep it? That's how you fix in the economy. Were you fixing the economy when you gave DSH our land at a dollar an acre for, uh, for 99 years? That's how you fix in the economy. You spent $11 million on a bypass road for TRK. That's how you fix in the economy. $15 million. St. Jude. Saint, no, no, there is no lost box. There is a lost box. St. Jude, the foundation was estimated at three million. A bill of nine million came, up, came, came through. That's how you were fixing the economy. Twelve million dollars to come and do. Twelve million to tell us what our locals have told us all the time. Fixing the economy, man. Which economy? Which economy? There is a blue economy there, and there is a real economy there. Which one will you fix? What economy were you fixing? You know? Give DSH out within two weeks, signing an agreement giving DSH right to sell our passports, and the proceeds can remain in a foreign bank to which we have no access. That's how you will fix in the economy, man. You, you need more than, up to now we don't have a prisoner holding facility. I built it. I built it. Look a little bit, we probably wouldn't have it. The member for Miku North was Prime Minister. I was Minister of Physical Development. I built it. You demolished the member of Cash is not sorry. You demolished it today. We have to find money to build another prisoner holding facility. That's how you will fix in the economy. Hmm? Seven million. You know? That's how you will fix. You are breaking the economy. You are mashing it up. That's what you are doing. Talk about fixing. Go and acquire a hotel. Government is not a hotelier. You are a hotelier. When you want to compulsory acquire Caribbean jewels hmm? and then ask invest to pay with over 50 million dollars in registered debt. That's a fact. That is a fact. That's not a fact. Oh, but Shocklands is brother. Oh, yeah. Member for Swazir Sautibus. Mr. Speaker, I, I looked at the leader of the opposition because I thought he would have... The, the land was not compulsory acquired, was it? Caribbean jewels? Yes. The land was purchased by Invest and Lucia. It was, it was in a receivership. Um, um, on a receivership. That is not correct. Um, member for Sozel, if you, are, if you don't know something for a fact, don't say. The land was, the hotel was acquired. The member for Miku South. Point of order on a clarification. If you... Clarification? No, I'm not accepting any clarification. Point of order, say. Are you? Members misleading the House. That is a point of order. Yeah. So you may Mr. proceed. Speaker, the same method that was used for the lands in the South in View Fort, when we had all these lands that were in receivership, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> were there because of the Icelandic bank. And in, he knows well, he's a lawyer. But you have two options. You can buy the company, but if you buy the company, Mr. Speaker, you don't know what liabilities you're buying into the company. 
So the mechanism that was used was we agreed with the receiver on how much the amount was going to be paid, and we compulsory acquired the land in order to not have to take over the company. But that's exactly what I said. And that, and no, it's not what you said. Member from Microsoft, are you agreeing with him that you... you <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the method was used, but the, method, but the, the, the purpose of what he is suggesting is that we just acquired. We did not. We acquired it in, in agreement with the receivers. But he never disputed how. He merely said that it was compulsorily acquired. That That's you agree with him. Proceed, ma'am. That's all I said. You know, Mr. Speaker, it's a fact. You compulsorily acquire a hotel when government is not a hotelier and the proceeds of the acquisition must be passed on to private entities. You acquire a hotel. Government power hotel ya may then a minister acquire a hotel massive by Kimun. Those are the and then you talk about fixing the economy. Fixing what? Mr. Speaker, I'm coming to you. There was a company that says it can train people. They stayed at Coco Palm. They stayed at Coco Palm. And the government and people of St. Lucia funded the training of cabinet ministers by that very agency. Dr. Bat. <laughs> they train you? <laughs> the, man, <laughs> the man, our representative, our ambassador to England at the time, Ambassador Mayors, even flew down to be trained by Dr. Bat at Coco Palm. And the bill was footed by the taxpayers of this country. You were fixing the economy. <laughs> You are fixing the economy. You know, Mr. Speaker, under the stewardship of the member from Iku North, we acquired the Orange Grove Hotel. No, Castries North, sorry. Under his stewardship. It was something I was never in agreement with, but it went through. We spent in excess of $50 million cumulatively on that hotel. Yes, on, on the building, sorry. On the mall. Orange Grove Mall. You see that hotel thing that stick in my mind already, Mr. Orange Grove Plaza. We spent in excess of $50 million on that plaza. Paying $252,000 a month in interest. But here comes the member from Miku South, Prime Minister then, sells it for 5 million US, which is 13.5 million EC. And in the deed, within the confines of the deed, enters into an agreement that would guarantee the purchaser cumulatively $52 million. I'll say it in Creole. Mr. Speaker, on a point of order, members misleading the House again. The acquisition of the, or the sale of the Orange Grove was only for the ground floor. So in fact, government owns the second and third floor, and government sold the ground floor. So the entire building was valued at 30 million EC, and that's what it was sold for, the 10 million US dollars. So five million for the ground floor, five million for upstairs. And the, the developers agreed to now to go in and fix the remaining of the building, of which government will pay a rent of four dollars. So I would certainly like to hear from the member, particularly from the member of the Minister of Finance, whether in fact that he's now examined the deal, whether in fact he thinks it's a bad deal. The reality is government didn't have to put any cash out, and we're going to be able to take a piece of land that has been undeveloped for so many years and been is now going to come and make a meaningful contribution to our economy at this time, with, with very little exposure by our government. In fact, the rental, the average rent we're paying now in the system is in excess of five dollars. This is going to be for $4. So I certainly would like to correct the member. Maybe he didn't read the fine detail of the, of the, to understand that element of it. Member of Castries Central, the member from Miku South has said 
that the building was not sold. It was the ground, the ground floor, the ground floor. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sure. I know you are one who knows the law. Mr. Speaker, to sell any part of a building now, it must be sold in accordance with the Condominium Act. There is a deed of sale of the property registered from the government of St. Lucia, from Amazon Properties, a company owned by the government of St. Lucia, to whoever there is a registered deed of sale. What it is within that deed, it says that the government undertakes and I remember the square footage, 78,406 square feet at $4 a square foot. That's correct, right? Good. How much is that monthly? I don't know. You just told us it's at $4. $4 a square foot, Mr. Speaker. With one and three quarter acres of land. Yeah, floor, yeah, the floor space is yeah, 43,000, almost two, two acres. You, are, you sold the property. You are turning back. <laughs> you are turning back and rent two floors. If you sold the ground floor, why have to pay rent? You sold the, the property, turn back, rent almost 80,000 square feet at four dollars a square foot which is almost three two hundred and two hundred and three hundred and twenty thousand dollars a month ten sir alan shaste fellow simplicia miss ten sir nutenio building lyokwe orange grove nu depasse a whole secret million dollar lay come premier ministre Alan Chastney Vani for 12 million, 12 million dollars, 13 and a half. Et en même temps, il a vani, il dit que ça il a loué presque 40 000 pieds carrés à l'idée de building. C'est presque des actes. À 4 dollars par pied carré. Ça a vini à 300 000 dollars par mois. Pas moi. En dernière année, combien ça là, ça y est? En dernière année, nous avons fait 3 millions 700 000 dollars. En 10 années, après il y a un la révie, il y a un peu de profil. Et nous supposons être là pour 16 l'année. And that is how you fix the economy. <laughs> huh? We sold the ground floor. That's a new one. Because you know what? You have given me further. <laughs> I will get the deed. I will make the deed public, I promise you. I will make the deed public. You sold the ground floor. There is a... It's not, <laughs> anyway. The SHO is public. You call it a fake. But Mr. Speaker, that is... That is the kind of leadership we had in this country. That is the kind of leadership we had in this country. And you know what, Mr. Speaker? Our Prime Minister has a philosophy. You never blame the recipient of a sweet deal. Blame the person who on government's behalf gave that other person such a sweet deal. If the United Workers Party had come to me now, and I'd ask me for 13 and a half million dollars. I don't have it, huh? but I would even sell my underwear to take advantage of the deal that was given on Orange Grove. Because 13 and a half million dollars and guaranteed 370 thousand dollars a month for 16 years. What more do you need? But the bank wouldn't even want a deposit. <laughs> That is how sweet the deal is, Mr. Speaker. Again, Mr. Speaker, point of order, the member is misleading the House. At the end of the day, 
the four dollars represents a significant decrease in the oh, amount yes. of rent that government pays. Yeah, this is not the additional rent. I'm hoping that the government will take advantage of the rent and the building that is being built there and transfer other places that are being. Remember built where 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 did he refer to a reduction or increase in rent? He's not, but he's he's, he's merely saying that we have paid X dollars and we are spending Y. He's, su uh, he's suggesting, Mr. Speaker. That's why I said he's misleading the house. He is suggesting. Well, I didn't get that impression. I did rent on top of it. I'm saying this is to substitute. That was the intention. No, no. That's no. why it's four dollars a square foot. And the government is now paying. Remember, Mikus House. I heard no insertion of any suggestion. I heard a direct statement that X dollars was. Um, it is sold for X dollars, even though we bought it for Y, and thereafter we are renting a certain amount that will cost us over a 16-year period more than $30 million. I never heard anything about increase or decrease in rental. Mr. Speaker, if the member is saying that it's going to be $300,000 a month in additional rent, did you hear him say that, Mr. Speaker? No, he didn't use the word additional. He, used, he just said it was $300,000 rent. So am I not to imply that there's going to be an increase in rent of $300,000 a month? Well, you're free to imply what you want. But so can I take it? Can I take it? You can take it what, how you want. The so speaker I, didn't take it that way, and that, was, that is what matters. Speaker, can, I get your, can I get your clarification? My can clarification you? is that all I heard the member for Castries Central say was whilst he was minister, they, they bought a building and spent nearly $50 million overall on that building. That building was then sold for $13.5 million. You have attempted to clarify, it was only the ground floor. That's in the air. Out of that $13.5 million, you're renting... Sorry, go ahead, yes. You're renting, you have agreed to rent over 70,000 square feet at $4, which comes to $300,000 a month. That's all he said. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In that, same, in that same vein, because if I say he has land there, which is a fact, and if I said he signed that yesterday, which is a fact, he'll say I'm implying that because he has land there, he signed that yesterday deal. And he has been caught for that. He has been caught for that. I said uh, a member of his family is a director of a family, which is a fact. She has been caught for that. So you understand. Remember, you, can't, yes. you yes. can't litigate what's in court here, right? Very well, very well, Mr. Speaker. But it is along the, those same lines. I spoke factually. I spoke factually that we bought a building, spent cumulatively in excess of $50 million on the building. He turned around, sold the building for $13.5 million. And in the same agreement, in the deal which I had yesterday, unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, as I said, I really didn't come prepared to make a contribution. I didn't, because I never envisaged that my friend would have opened the door. You know? And, and Mr. Speaker, we sold it. He sold it 13 and a half and guarantees the purchaser in excess of $52 million over the 16-year period. And it's easy to calculate. He has just admitted that he rented, he agreed to rent 78,000 square feet at $4 a square foot. That's almost 320,000 by, by, um, by 12. That's about 400, 4 million a year, 16 years. 16 years. 16 years and that is how you tell me you stand in this house before the people of this country and tell us you are fixing the economy mr and again in a in a in a in a, in a flood plane you know mr speaker in a flood in a flood plane mr speaker just imagine in the agreement in, and I told my colleagues that yesterday we were supposed to have had delivery of the building by a certain date. That date has passed. The court was supposed to have moved there in accordance with the agreement he signed. Today, Mr. Speaker, we still continue to pay $40,000 a month to house the court where it currently is because the completion date has passed and we have been given no building. And then, Mr. Speaker, you hear I was busy fixing the economy. Mr. Speaker, 
I want to say, I will, I will save the best for last and will await the member to speak on another resolution that we have there. <laughs> I didn't intend to make any contribution, as I said, but Mr. Speaker, like I said, when the door is opened, you enter, and I cannot sit idly by and hear the member for Miku South spewing so many untruths, which if left unchallenged, would have gone down the annals of belief. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.